Are they gonna pick you out of the bed? <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty cool to me. Sean, oh shit, but Manny Pacquiao played me with it. You gotta try and hold it before you Yo, Sean, how do you like it? It's nice. It's, it's a nice deal. It's crazy, we're on top of a lake right now, Lake, lake Simcoe. Yeah. Yeah, man, look at the moon right up there. Yeah. In the middle of the lake, yeah. Look at that view. Yeah, that's cool. So DeAndre, what's your technique when you're doing the ice fishing? What do you look for? How do you know the fish is there? Definitely. You know, a really light tug. A really light tug. Really. And you have to pull immediately, right? Yeah, as fast as you can. If you pull too late, it gets away. Alright, alright. Oh wow. You got it. Oh, I can just yeah, there we go. Nice catch. Oh, now we know. I guess they do bite at night. Super rare dog. Damn, that's too bright. Ah, so Sean, how's the fishing? Good, it's going good. No, nothing yet, though. Yeah, I guess uh, they don't bite too much at night. But you said last time you got like a good four or five fish, eh? Along there, yeah. Nice, nice. But yeah, I wonder how far we are from those coyotes. You know, they're probably closer to... Oh, look at this. Look at the little guy. I feel bad for him, you know? But you know, I mean, that's that's how it is, you know. People gotta eat. That's how they survive. <laughs> and the thing with fish is, I do feel bad for them, but I know, to an extent, like, let's say with chicken and stuff, I feel more bad for it, because chickens have more emotional capabilities, you know. Their brains work differently. They can feel pain, you know, more than the fish. You know, fish are more instinctive. Hopefully we can get at least one. Well, yeah, definitely it's the lake around here, the nature around here, there's coyotes. Probably within a few kilometers from us. Coyotes for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well Sean, you were wondering what the mo what what other dangerous animals in Toronto we got? In Ontario. In Ontario. Oh when you say Ontario now that's a whole different yeah. ball game. Um, nothing, no bite yet? Mm, nothing yet. So, when you say for Ontario, Ontario is, you know, it's a pretty big. Toronto, in, in comparison, is obviously a lot of the animals that used to live in Toronto were chased out, and then people started building cities and stuff. And a lot of these animals, you know, they're farther in Ontario in the forests and stuff like that yeah you know. so Toronto if we're starting with the fish uh, I'm okay I'm good for now what to eat I guess to keep you and probably eat later yeah to cook it yeah 
but um, yeah, in regards to um, to Toronto first, when we're talking wild animals, um, Toronto, obviously the first one, like you mentioned, is coyotes, which are not necessarily that dangerous, but they can be, you know, because they come in packs, they're very quick, they have very sharp teeth, and imagine dealing with them. You have three of them. They're not that small like people think. They're a good 50 pounds for a big one. So to 50 pounds, they can run 50, 60 kilometers per hour. <clears throat> extremely agile. And they're tearing at your f- flesh. Big sharp teeth, tearing away. People can bleed out quick. They're capable of taking down deer. They can definitely take down a person. I would say, you know, probably two of them. Two, three of them can take down the average man. In my opinion. Could be wrong. It might take more. The average guy is bigger. Much bigger. Yeah. But, you know. But yeah, they're obviously, you know, when it comes to dangerous animals in Toronto, coyotes are not necessarily known to be dangerous. But they can be. Like what they did to that girl I told you about. She was from Toronto, wanted to be a singer. Her name's Taylor Mitchell. Yeah. She went to Vancouver and she was, she wanted to be a, like one of those big time singers, you know, the next Rihanna or whatever. And uh, she went to Vancouver, she had a concert. Her career was starting to, you know, starting to, to start off. She's making great performances, albums. And when she went to Vancouver, go for a little nature walk, she came a little early. Wanted to just relax before the big event. She saw a coyote. And it made the mistake which Sean you should never do. When you see one, do not run. It triggers their, their prey and predator instincts. When something runs, they think prey. They feel like they're the predator. All depends, you know, you can you can observe if their if their attention's at you and let's say it's one or two, you could probably scare them off. If you wave your arms, look big, and yell. If, you know, on the other flip side, if they're like walking by you, you can just mind your business. Running would be the least thing you'd do. If, if, if anything, maybe even walking, turning your back and walking would be better than running. You know? But yeah, coyotes would probably be, uh, Toronto itself is one of the only ones I can think of obviously there's there's foxes which are not really that dangerous because they're smaller but you never know they can have diseases and they could be aggressive because of rabies and whatnot you know but there's foxes foxes in Ontario or in in Toronto Toronto. oh onto all yeah foxes everywhere in North America but in Toronto there's foxes which can be dangerous they do have sharp teeth and um on top of that um, raccoons, you know, I'm sure if you corner a raccoon, those things, I've seen videos of them, they can attack ferociously. They could? Yeah, they attack, they're aggressive, when they're, when they're threatened, they get it, they're, obviously it's animal fighting to survive, you know what I mean? They get scared, they have a life to live, they can attack with those sharp teeth, you know, little, like little badgers. Now, the majority, the only one really to be fearful of would be the coyote, like, when you're talking about if you're walking alone and you saw a fox, you wouldn't be that scared. No. If you saw a raccoon, a little bit, right? Yeah. If you see coyotes, well, they're bigger, much bigger than fox- foxes and, like, twice the size of raccoons, right? Yeah, yeah. And they come in numbers. Mm-hmm. And they're fast. And they can take down pretty big animals. Even some accounts, they're taking down bucks, male... Oh, that, you know, in Toronto, another, might be a surprise, but another dangerous animal in Toronto, deer. Oh yeah, deers are common. Because a white-tailed deer, usually most of them, are, like you'll see, are probably females. Most I've seen are females or young males, and they're not that, that big. But when a, when a white-tailed deer is fully grown, they can reach 200 or 300 pounds. And when you look at, if you ever seen a white-tailed deer, a male buck, even a young buck, mm-hmm, yeah. they're jacked with muscle. Imagine a kick from that, boom, 
a 300 pound deer yeah. with all those muscles boom kicking right in the ribs it'll break that crack your ribs and your organs would probably not function yeah and then you know you'd die yeah not, not to mention aside from their kicks yeah their antlers are big and sharp so deer deer are peaceful animals usually in mating season they're more aggressive but if you leave them alone they'll leave you alone but the thing is in regards to deer is if you let's say you you come close to one and it's, it has a young there or if you were to make it like you trap it in a corner you threaten it for whatever reason you get too close to it yeah. and it feels threatened mm -hmm. and it, it chooses to fight to defend itself yeah yeah then yeah. that deer yeah is gonna mess people up bad people don't know you know they don't know unless they've seen a full-grown white-tailed deer they don't know really much they'll think more about coyotes and foxes the deer is stronger than both of them a white-tailed deer would beat up a full-grown white-tailed deer buck would beat the shit out of a coyote because you think of it it's way bigger Imagine 200 pound animal against the 50 pound animal. One kick from that deer, the deer is done. One kick from the deer, the coyote would be break his head. Yeah. The thing is, coyotes are fast and they have numbers, so that way they can keep, you know, keep circling the deer, tire it out until it's so exhausted, bite it, bite, bite, bite until it bleeds out. So they, you know, coyotes. That shows how capable coyotes are. It's crazy. But if we're talking Toronto, that's pretty much yeah. all to worry about. But there are accounts of black bears. Think about it in Ontario. There's black a bears? lot of black bears, yeah. A lot of them. Outside of Toronto, there's a lot of black bears. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess I'm fine for now. I feel warm because <laughs> my jacket, I have a bunch of jackets. Why do I have this thing here? Oh. I brought it and I have tea and hot chocolate and stuff, but I don't have no cups. No cups? Oh shoot. Uh, I think. Sean, you good? Yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm good too. Well, thanks, Liv. But yeah, um, there's a lot of black bears. All over. Oh, that's the goat train. A lot of black bears. All over Ontario. Right? Yeah. So, that's one thing to consider. And, um, sometimes, imagine, um, there's some parks in, in Toronto that are connected to a lot of... A lot of these parks are connected and connected and connected. And a huge, you know, huge trail of them through the rivers and stuff like that. Through yeah. by the lake. Huge trail of parks. Mm -hmm. And they'll lead to places in Ontario. So where the black bears, you know, they're living in Ontario, they're, they can continue to wander and wander into Toronto. So black bears are one of the animals also that could be a danger in... in maybe even here, you never know. Yeah, too. There could be. We're right. in Lake Simcoe. It's a whole bunch of parks and we're pretty far out. It's a good hour, hour drive, hour, 10 minute drive from where we, our area, right? So, you know, there's a good chance up here. They might, might have black. wild. Yeah, it could be. It's possible. Now imagine, take into this. In Scarborough, I don't know where I can send you a link. Even in this vlog, I can attach a, a picture of this. In Scarborough, and this is confirmed. There was a black bear that wandered into a Scarborough neighborhood. So, if they can wander into Scarborough, <laughs> then, you know, they're probably around here. And in terms of Ontario, yeah, that's... Man, one of the dangers would be black bear. Black bears, usually, they don't... What people say is they don't... You feel something? Okay, keep breathing, keep... Ooh. What did you feel? Like something nicked it? Yeah, it was like... I'm not joking. Yeah. Oh... How do I, uh, um, he did, but, yeah, but it just it, nothing. Like he didn't get anything. Oh, then you flick it the other way now. And how did I bring it up? Uh, flick it the other way. Really? Uh, flick it the other way first. Yeah. No, reel it. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, he didn't get it. No. I thought I did. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, what was but, yeah. I was just saying. Um. Yeah, but you had to take loose, so that's why it's gone. Yeah, I think it was too late. You can't have the line loose. Oh, yeah. Keep it tight. Okay. Yeah, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah, I was saying about um, bears, right? Yeah. So black bears are not really that dangerous to people. 
that is what they say. Is usually if a black bear sees you, it will run the other way. But consider this: black bears can weigh three hundred or more pounds. They're Jesus big, Christ. right? They're pretty damn big. No, not obviously not. They're like not as big as a grizzly or anything close. But two hundred or three hundred pounds or more for a black bear. I'm sure they're probably even more than that. If a deer could be two, three hundred pounds, a black bear's probably more, considerably more. Consider that um, the size of them. Yeah. If they wanted to, they would mess up a person with absolute ease. Breeze right through a person. What do you mean? Just walk right through. If a black bear wanted to, if it sees you and it wanted to kill you, it would kill you. And there's nothing you can do about it. It would just walk right through you, you and me at the same time. Really? Yeah, those are t bears in general are tough animals. Tough. Like they can instantly kill you. <laughs> yeah. Now, a grizzly bear, for sure, one swipe of the paw would literally take your heads off. Grizzly bear, man, those things would be 900 pounds. So wait, there's a difference between black bears and grizzly bears. Oh yeah, grizzlies are way... Gri now, black bears... Um, oh. If I saw a black bear, I'd be scared shitless. But what if, if you see a grizzly... A grizzly <laughs> you're done. Good thing is, no, here's the thing with grizzlies. Now, grizzlies are like... Twice the size, almost, of a black bear. Twice the size? Yeah. And I've seen a black bear, not, I mean, in pictures. In pictures, yeah. Jesus. I think the grizzlies are much bigger. And on top of that, they're more aggressive. They attack people way more. Like a black bear, a lot of times, will run will run away from you. What's okay. going on here? Do you need help? No, no, no. Yeah, oh. but, yeah? No, uh, yeah, a black bear, a lot of the time, will run away from you. Right? Mm -hmm. Now... In regards to the um, grizzlies, they're not gonna run away from you. <laughs> They'll see you. Maybe, I, well, to be honest, they sometimes they would. I've seen videos of people scaring off grizzlies, even polar bears, just because the they're, the the, pol the grizzlies or polar bears get confused. And when they see somebody screaming Aah! and acting aggressive, the, the the bear gets confused. What the fuck? And they 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 run because they're confused. But a lot of the time, they won't be. And they're likely to attack because with, with grizzlies, they're more aggressive and they're more territorial. And if they have cubs and they feel you're a danger to a cub, they're going to mess you up. They are less likely to really eat you, but I'm sure if they're hungry, they'll eat you too. But they might just attack you to mess you up and get you off the territory or whatever it is. So grizzly bears, you got to definitely watch out for. I do not know if they're in Ontario. But there's one that is probably... It's, I would be more worried of this animal than any of them. And it's not Ontario. It's not Ontario? It's the mountain lion. The mountain lion? Mountain oh, lion. I heard of, it's not Ontario? Yeah, it's inside Ontario. Damn. A mountain lion. I don't know if they're here. I doubt they're here. But think of this. There's a lot of mountain lions actually in Canada. There's a lot. The population, I don't remember the number, but there's a good amount of them. A lot of them. In the wild. In, in the wild in Canada. Some of them are in Ontario, a pretty good chunk in Ontario, so you don't know where they're wandering. They might wander place to place to place to place and end up somewhere around here. There's sightings of them even, now these are not confirmed sightings, but even in Toronto. Rouge, Rouge Hill had a few sightings of them with people listed on websites and stuff. Not confirmed, but That's mountain scary. lions, the thing with mountain lions is they'll see you as food. So they'll instantly get you. A black a coyote will not generally see you as food. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a chance they would if they're that hungry. Uh, same with black bear. Generally won't see you as food. Even a grizzly bear. Sometimes. They prefer other meals. Mm -hmm. But a mountain lion will see you as food. And is more likely to attack you. For food related reasons. So now think of it. A mountain lion. Got this three. Two. Two. Two, three hundred pound cat and claws are super sharp, teeth are super sharp, pounce on you with like so much force. Boom! What can you do? Got its, its, its teeth deep in your neck. You're punching it, you're punching it, but it's squeezing on you even harder than you're punching it. By the time you think you can fight it off, you're already dead. You're already dead? Yeah, it's got its like pits. instantly. Not instantly. Some people have fought mountain lions off. Generally, though, young ones. There was actually 
and it's impressive because cats are very strong creatures and even this is impressive there was a guy i don't know i think he was 170 pounds he was attacked by a 90 pound mountain lion the mountain lion was really like it was starving i think and really mm -hmm. hungry so i couldn't really catch a lot of food mm -hmm. so i had no choice but to go for a human he picked the wrong human though the mountain lion this yeah the mountain lion was 90 pounds so it had the size disadvantage but some mountain lions could be like could be big could be 150 160 170 200 pounds even some of them could be big this one was not that big so the guy was able to fight it off and he strangled it the he strangled lion. the mountain lion and he oh. killed the mountain lion so you know sometimes people could fight them off but if that was a full-grown mountain lion he would probably have died jesus so there's mountain lions that are like fully grown, like bigger than the regular. Yeah, average. much bigger than that one. Jesus at least. Christ. There's also wolves in Ontario too. Is there? Yeah, even on Algonquin, Algonquin Park has wolves. So it's a place you wanted to go. <laughs> like good, wild in the wild. In the wild, they're wild wolves. Here's the thing: wolves, and I'm gonna say generally, are not known for attacking people. I don't know if that could be because of thousands of years. Um, you have to consider this. Thousands of years ago, I don't know if people, it depends on what we believe, but what is, you know, according to a lot of sources, yeah. thousands of years ago, people, you know, there would be wolves that would, you know, people would feed, would give to food. You know what I mean? And then as time went on, those wolves formed companionships with humans. And then eventually, you know, they became hunting partners and they became friends and, you know, wolves evolved into dogs. That's a very common theory. So it could be that part of the reason of the evolutionary, the history between humans and wolves, why wolves do not attack people that often. Mm -hmm. But there are certainly some, a lot of cases where they do. In World War, I don't know if it was World War Two or World War One, but there were so many wounded soldiers and they would have these wars near the wilderness. And because wolves were hungry at the time, yeah. They would see these wounded soldiers and would just eat them. The wounded soldiers that were just there, like gunshots, gunshots. just laying there, like crawling. The wolves would kill them because they were hungry. So, you know what I mean? Wolf. We got, you got to think, a wolf. Coyote is 40, 50 pounds. And, you, and if you see one, they're, to be honest, they're a little frightening. Think of a wolf. Wolves. You got a 30 to 50 pound coyote. Wolves can be... 100, 110, 120, 130, 140. Wolves can be big. big. And on top of that, they're fast, agile. Yeah. They bite hard. The average person would get crushed by a wolf. Bad. So there's a pretty good amount of, if we're talking in Ontario, there's a good amount of animals that can mess us up. Mess up, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know much about this area. I didn't research what's around, so I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> Could be but like... I know for yeah. sure, hundred percent around here, guaranteed coyotes everywhere. Deer, possibly black bears. It's a possibility, and we gotta pray. Yeah. So DeAndre, no lucky. Damn. No lucky. That looks fun, eh? These people just cruising on whatever vehicle that is. But just thinking, is that how fast like a plane goes on average on air? You think? A plane or is faster? probably way faster. Faster than uh, that? Yeah, much faster. Holy <laughs> Imagine a plane can cover entire countries within, you know, within yeah. within a day. Oh, God. oh yeah, planes are much much faster. <clears throat> but yeah, when it comes to animals that. I would say are um, specifically. Hey, what's up, DeAndre? <laughs> you know, we gotta give DeAndre support. You know, he's getting ready for some big things. He's gonna kill it. You know. <laughs> but that's the thing about life is, you know, sometimes you can push yourself to the max, and on that specific day, you don't know how your body will perform. Either your nerves can be there. 
You have adrenaline dump or an adrenaline rush, which both can be bad. Adrenaline dump is obviously much worse. Adrenaline rush, if you don't control it, you might rush too much. You know what I mean? You don't know what your mind's at. You don't know if your body can cramp. What you ate can affect your endurance. Sometimes all you gotta do is just do your best. Yeah. What I was saying was, in regards to, um, in regards to, to animals. Yeah. If we're talking in Canada, very, very, very top up north. Yeah. Is the most dangerous of them all. Like up north. Far, far up north. Like how far? We're talking. Like talking the very, up. very freezing Arctic. Up close to where the North Pole and you know all those way way at the very very top where people are you know very few people live there because it's so freezing cold yeah there's one animal which is one of the few animals that will actively seek people mm -hmm. for food which one it's the polar bear oh. there's a reason why they say it when it's black fight back when it's brown stay down and when it's white, good night. <laughs> you know, oh. they say that, and it's a, it's a, it's a very. There's a good reason. First, a black bear. Generally, sometimes you can fight off, even though they could kill you. There's a chance you can fight and back enough to scare it, mm -hmm. and you're still within a close enough size range where if you are a pretty big guy, mm -hmm. and there's a 200 pound black bear, there's a decent chance that it might turn back. They're they're more timid. A grizzly bear. You could be, you could be Brock Lesnar, and it'll walk right through you if it wanted to. With one, just boom, one paw swipe. So now, when it comes to grizzly bear, they say stay down because you can't. Maybe you, sometimes you can, but you can't fight it back off. And they say stay down because grizzly bear is generally not gonna want to hunt you. If it's hungry, it probably would. But the grizzly bear, you can stay down, let it mess you up, and it might just go its way. We'll see you as not a threat oh, okay. and it'll be like okay well i messed it up it's not a threat to my children and it might leave you alone if you're lucky a polar bear on the other hand is going to see you and he's instead of seeing human he's going to see food oh look at that chicken nugget oh look at that burger that's what's going on in a lot of the polar bear's mind right. and you gotta imagine in, in arctic areas there's not a whole lot of food you know, there's seals and stuff, but it's a polar bear is hungry almost always. So they're going to take food at any chance they get. Yeah. And to a polar bear, anything moving can be considered food. So, look at the size of a polar bear. When you look at it, okay, let's say a black bear, I'm going to assume 300 pounds, whatever, 400, maybe. Grizzly bears, I know the weight range. The average one could be around 600 pounds and they can go all the way up to 900 or more. Mm -hmm. There is one type of bear called the Kodiak bear. Kodiak, okay. And those ones could be big. They can weigh more than a thousand pounds. The polar bear could be, you know, a thousand and two hundred, one thousand five hundred. Some accounts are even two thousand pounds for a polar bear. For a polar bear. They are absolutely massive. So imagine there's, let's say, I got a 150 something pound man like me against a 2,000 pound polar bear. It's gonna think, the hell is this little thing gonna do? It's food to me, you know? Yeah. Even DeAndre, anybody, the toughest guys in the world are nothing but fleas to the polar bear. They're nothing but snacks. Wow. So, the polar bear, you see one. Unlike other bears that might leave you alone, even a grizzly bear might leave you alone. Mm -hmm. The polar bear is most likely going to go right at you. The moment it sees you, he's going to go charging at you. Charging at you. And he's going to get you, tackle you. The force of that animal, its weight, is going to crush all your bones. And he's going to eat you while you're alive. And you can't move because you're in so much pain and your bones are broken. But you're going to feel him tearing apart your flesh. Bite by bite, just tearing everything apart. There's a there's one incident that happened. What's that? And uh, well, there's also many incidents that happen like this. But 
One of the incidents I, I, I read about recently. One guy. Don't know his name. But he went and he took his children on a fishing trip. Coincidentally, and I think they were doing bird watching and stuff like that. He brought a gun with him. He was a hunter. Oh, okay. So, brought his children. He had his gun. They're like, you know, looking at the birds' nests and looking at the eggs. And, you know, the... And he went up in a place that polar bears live. Mm -hmm. In this area, while he's watching his children, he sees a polar bear stalking his child from a distance, looking at his child. Well, he did what any father would do. He tried to get in, you know, he tried to go up to the bear, and get in between the bear and his child, but he made one mistake. Wow. And that shows that sometimes these small decisions can make the biggest make impacts. Mistake. yeah. Mistakes are okay, but sometimes a mistake can end everything. When he ran to get in between the polar bear and his daughter, he forgot his gun. So when by the time he went to pull, where's my gun? It's he notices it's down by the boat, and he's telling his children, "Rush to the boat! Rush to the boat!" This polar bear is there and all he can do is pray. He's screaming, he's screaming, ah, trying to scare it off. Mm -hmm. Maybe some polar bears would have been confused and ran off, but this one wasn't. This one went right at him. Like tackled him, yeah. The moment it tackled him, imagine the weight and the force of that animal. Boom! He collapsed to the floor. Mm -hmm. Couldn't move at all. He's being torn apart right in front of his children. The polar bear killed him. Quickly. Easily, but his children got away. Got away. They got away. So polar bears, it's nothing to. It's the most terrifying creature you can probably encounter. Because okay, let's look at. Let me think of the terrifying creatures. All right, the hippos are up there because hippos kill one of their, their animals that kill. One of the animals that kill the most people of all the world. And they're way much larger than polar bears, actually, and stronger too. A hippo would probably be the shit out of a polar bear. A hippo? Yeah, hippos are, are tough. Are you serious? Hippos are I, big. I would think it's more like a polar bear than a hippo. Oh no. The... <laughs> I gotta get him on my vlog. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, you missed it because it... Uh, I caught a little piece, but... Hippos much, they're big. Hippos, you know, imagine polar bear. I'm going to assume the average one, 1,200, 1,500. A hippo's more than twice that size in terms of weight. And then if you've seen a hippo's jaw, they can open up big. They have yeah. huge teeth. They can clamp down. Like a watermelon, I see them just like. Yeah, clamp right through that watermelon. So if a hippo and a polar bear fought, the hippo would be too big. It would probably, the hippo polar bear probably would run away. Because it would see this is a much bigger animal than it. If it did want to fight back for whatever reason, maybe it's trying to defend his children, it might scratch the hippo up. But the hippo was going to bite. Well, the moment the hippo bites it, imagine that force clamping through the, hip, the, the polar bear's organs, tearing it open. I think the polar bear would probably die a pretty gruesome death. But he would put up a decent fight. He would probably scratch up that hippo, leave some... Because they got big paws. Bite the hippo, but the hippo would end up killing it brutally. So hippos, hippos, it's surprising to some, I'm but hippos are very aggressive animals. They kill so much people in Africa. Hippos see people, they charge and just kill them. Just they're aggressive. Because they of the big bite. The big bite, yeah. They just they see people oh. and they just want to scare them off. And sometimes they get pissed off and just decide to kill it. It's like a little pest. <laughs> Walk through these people, kill them, chop them up with their bite. <laughs> Done. Hippos are aggressive. Crocodiles, there's a reason why the biggest crocodiles fear hippos. Really? Unless yeah. we're, we're talking Gustav. Gustav was a man-eating crocodile that was huge. Its size wasn't as big as hippos, but he was real big for a crocodile, and hippos were afraid of him. Hippos didn't dare challenge the crocodile Gustav. He was a legendary man-eating crocodile, mm -hmm. had gunshots all over him, and he lived for many, many years. And people would try to kill it, but Gustav always somehow survived. But majority of other crocodiles, all terrified of hippos. Even lions don't mess with hippos, unless the hippo's sick or something. 
you might see a video of lions attacking hippos but generally they're sick ones and generally like you'll see a lion well, i saw one video it's jumping on the hippo's back just chilling there eating it to you know but um you know when it comes to that in that regard um yeah like you know lions usually with a, a young not young but an adult young adult hippo who's who's healthy and strong and big mm -hmm. lions would not go for that unless they got a huge pack and they're you know but they they are so many other animals to pursue wow. but the thing was um hippos as far as i recall they don't really eat meat you know no, they just kill people just to kill them, just because they they, they want to just, they don't like to see people in their territory, and they just kill them, you know? It's kind of like if you saw a rat right now, you just kill it, not to eat it, but you're just annoyed by it. Yeah. A polar bear is going to kill you because it wants to eat, eat you, yeah. you know? So that's the thing, it's, there's nothing really you can think of much. A rhino, is not, they don't eat meat, they might just kill you just because they're pissed off that they see you, and they think you're in my territory, they want, you know what I mean? They're, Elephant, they sometimes kill people too, but no, the thing is, more innocent. sometimes, yeah, but not as, not, you know, when we're talking African elephants, they're more aggressive than Indian elephants. Oh. But, um, what I mean is like, of all those animals, there's a chance if you see an elephant, I mean, probably it's going to mind his business, walk away, look at you as a little tiny human. Rhino might like, leave you alone. Unless you come close to it. Mm -hmm. Hippo, if you're far away from it, it's going to... Ah, the human's far, far from me. I'm just, you know, whatever. I have no reason to chase it. I don't want to eat it. It's not my food. A polar bear, you can see it from all the way down there. And it spots you and it sees food. And it's going to come all the way towards you and stalk you down until it gets you and eats you. It won't stop? It will not stop. Even if it's like red at three lights is blinking like probably <laughs> probably they're hungry they're always hungry <laughs> they want food so you're saying it, it won't be tired if it ran from all the way where the three lights is all day to here it probably would but he won't run he's gonna jog oh but he's gonna keep jogging he's probably gonna keep jogging oh and the thing is they're gonna be a lot faster than you are you sure <laughs> yeah polar bears <laughs> imagine grizzly bear i don't know the speed of a polar bear exactly but a grizzly bear they can actually run pretty damn fast. Like, they're the fastest man in the world yeah. is nowhere close to the speed of a grizzly bear. And I'm pretty sure that probably a polar bear is pretty damn fast too. So if I wanted, even from where those lights are and it spots you, it's going to keep coming. Unless it sees some other kind of food. But if you're the only thing it sees, because sometimes in the Arctic there's so many open snow space and very little food. That you might be the only thing they'll see. Yeah. And it'll keep going until it gets that food. Because either oh. it gets to you yeah. or it starves to death. Oh. So of all the animals. Now, a tiger. Oh. Tiger is much smaller than... Pol Let's say it's a big tiger. I'm going to say 600, 700 pound. Siberian tigers pretty big. Yeah. Or at least once were pretty big. Mm. Let's say 600, 700. That's a big tiger. But a polar bear... 1,500 pounds, double the size. A lion, much bigger than the lion too. So the the polar bear is way lar larger, and therefore <laughs> it probably all these animals would would kill you, especially like a tiger, lion. They'll, they'll pro but a polar bear is way bigger mm -hmm. than those other animals that I mentioned just now, mm -hmm. and is more likely to kill you for food instantly. Instantly. Yeah, it will see you. It will walk right through you one paw swipe. Ooh. Just shatter your whole skull. I had a bite. Oh shit. Yep, yep. Oh, he's got something. Oh, Ooh, he got something. something. Damn. He got one. Nice. Ma. A little baby one. A little baby one. <laughs> Oh. I think there's a big one though, because it felt heavier and then the light. Yeah, I see it, eh? It's a giant circle around the moon. That's um, that's beautiful.